Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to calculate interest rates using the rate function in Excel. So let's get started. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills like Excel. Now, time value of money is also called financial functions in Excel. There's five things we need to keep up with. The future value is the lump sum at the end of the problem. Present value is the lump sum at the beginning of the problem. Payment is a stream of payments or an annuity. And here we're looking at number four, the rate. We're going to calculate, now watch, the periodic interest rate. We'll have to convert it to an annual rate on some of these problems. And then NPER is the number of periods. We have been working on a series of videos, and so I'll link those below where you can see how to calculate each one of these specifically. All right, so let's do the first example, the return on a lump sum investment. You invest some money and it grows. All right, so here's what it's gonna look like and let me clear everything out. I'm gonna use the formula text. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So Roger invests $12,000. It grows to 20,000 in seven years. What is the rate of return or the compound annual growth rate, CAGR, in this problem? So the periods per year, this is a annual problem, so we'll put one. And the type in Excel is the payments happen at the end of the period, we put a zero. The beginning of the period, we put a one. So there's no payment, so we're just gonna put zero. The default really is zero. So what is the number of periods? The number of periods is seven. We're gonna calculate the periodic interest rate, which happens to be an annual rate in this example. The present value, now watch. One thing that we need to know is present value and future value are opposite, so they have to have a different sign. So Roger invests 12,000, so the present value is gonna be negative 12,000. He paid 12,000, and then it grows to a positive 20,000. Now there's no payment going on, just a simple little problem. So we need to calculate the rate. The function in Excel is called rate, so we're going to calculate the periodic interest rate. So I'm going to use the FX up here at the formula builder. It gives me the formula builder. I'm going to search for rate. So the number of periods, I'm going to point to the 7. The payment is the 0, I'll point to that. The present value is already a negative because we're showing this, it's already negative 12,000. The future value is 20,000. And the payments happen at the end of the period, so that's a zero. And we could guess, we're not going to guess, because um, Excel can do it without us having to guess. Now, what's the formula? Let me show you this. This is using the formula text function. And I have done it on every tab. I won't show it every time. Formula text, I'm going to point to this. So what we have is the rate of return. If you invest 12,000, it grows to 20,000 in seven years. The rate of return or CAGR, compound annual growth rate, is 7.57%. All right, so that's already an annual rate, so we don't have to convert it. The other ones are gonna be monthly, so we're gonna convert those to annual rates. So let's switch and let's use a return on an annuity or a stream of payments. So let's get all this deleted and once again I have the formula text and I'm going to show how to convert it to an annual rate here in just a minute. Lindsay invests $200 per month and it grows to $20,000 at the end of five years. What is the rate of return or what is the CAGR, compound and annual growth rate, for this investment? We're going to put in 12 as the periods per year. It doesn't say the payments happen at the beginning of the period so we'll put a zero. The number of periods is five years. So we'll take five years times 12, that's 60 months. So we're talking about a monthly problem here. The present value is zero. We started with zero. The payment, Lindsay is paying $200 per month out of her pocket, so negative 200, and it grows to 20,000. So this is the proper way to set it up. So we're going to calculate the rate, once again, fx, the rate function. The number of periods is 60. This is a monthly problem, so we have to use 60, not 5 for years. The payment is going to be a negative $200 each month. The present value is 0. The future value grows to 20000 The payments happen to the end of the period, so that's a 0. And we're not going to guess. 
So you say, well, I made 1.62%. Well, you think, hey, that's, um, that's great. Well, that's only the monthly return. So we need to take the 1.62 times 12%, and she earned a 19.38% rate of return. Well, what if she invested $300 a month? So minus 300, well, her return would, would have been 4.22. That's an extremely high percent return, but that's what would happen if she invested $200 per month and it grew to 20,000. All right, you see we have the rate function here and we've converted it to an annual rate. So we'll do that each time. We'll just take this rate times 12. So this 1.62 is a um, monthly rate and this is the annual rate. All right, the next one we want to do is, let's say Margot has $5,000 and she invests 500 per month and it grows to 1 million. So this is an account that we're adding to with periodic investments. It grows to $1 million in 30 years. What is the rate of return or CAGR? And we want to really know the annual return, but Excel calculates the periodic return. So 12 periods. The type is the, uh, happens at the end of the period. The number of periods is going to be 30 years times 12. So I'm, I'm going to uh, calculate that 30 times 12. That's 360. I could have just typed in 360, but I wanted to just see where we got that number. The present value is a negative 5,000, and the payment is a negative $500 each month. And it grows to exactly $1 million. So what is the rate of return? We're going to calculate a periodic, a monthly rate of return, and then times 12, it will be the annual rate. So that's what we care about. So this is the rate function again. The number of periods is 360. The payment is going to be $500 per month. We started with $5,000. The future value is going to be $1 million. The payments happen at the end of the period. And we're finished. So it looks like Margot received a 9% return over that 30-year investment life. She started with 5000 and then she every month put in 500 and so then after, at the end of 30 years, her balance is exactly $1 million, or 9.05%. All right, the next one, we have an account, but the account has withdrawals. So Philip already has $650,000. He withdraws $2,500 at the beginning of each month and it grows to 1 million in 10 years. What is the rate of return or CAGR? So this is gonna be a 12 periods per year. The type is gonna be one because it's the beginning of the year. The number of periods is gonna be 10 years, so 120 months. The present value is gonna be a negative 650,000. We paid 650,000 and we're gonna receive the 1 million. The now withdraws twenty five hundred. You're going to receive if you're Mar Philip. You're going to receive twenty five hundred as a positive, and you're going to receive one million. Now, how is it possible that you can take money out and the count still grows? Well, at six hundred fifty thousand, a ten percent return is sixty five thousand. Now, I'm not sure what the return is on this account, but twenty five hundred. If you take that out, uh, that's thirty thousand a year. Uh, 2,500 times 12 is 30,000 a year. If you withdraw that, you still uh, have uh, maybe a positive return and it still grows your account. So let's see how this one works. So once again, the rate function, the number of periods is 120. The payment is gonna be a positive 2,500. The present value is a negative 650, 650,000. Positive one million is a future value. The payments happen at the beginning of the month. So that is 0.68 and then times 12. All we did was take the 0.68 times the 12 and we've annualized that interest rate to 8.15%. So Philip has earned 8%, a little bit more than 8% over the life of this uh, investment. And so 
he is taking out less than what the investment is returning. And so then over 10 years, it still grew to 1 million. All right, the last one, let's do a car loan. Let's look at a different situation. Let's say that Dan purchased a car for 24,600. His payments are $515 per month for 60 months. What is the interest rate on the loan? Now, sometimes people, they, they keep up with how much they paid. So this is a 12 periods per year problem. Payments happen at the end of the period. And they say, well, look, I'm paying off this loan for 60 months. And I know I, I borrowed 24,600. And we'll make that uh, positive 24,600. You're receiving essentially cash to pay off that vehicle. And you're going to make a payment of negative 515, and the future value is going to be zero. So what is the rate of return or the uh, interest rate on the loan? You may know these factors. You can still fi figure out the interest rate. So we're going to do rate function, of course. The rate, the number of periods is 60. The payment is a negative 515. The present value is a positive 24,600. The future value is zero. The payments happen at the end of the period, so that's a zero. And so here we go. We're going to calculate 0.78% per month or times 12, 9.36 is the interest rate on this loan. So now you can figure out, if you know the other things, you can figure out the interest rate. If this is helpful for you, give me a thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. We also have several time value of money or financial functions in Excel videos you can watch, and I'll link to them down below. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.